Welcome to the Professional Troublemaker Podcast. This is the place where we help you cultivate the courage, authenticity, and audacity you need to use your voice, take up space, and live a life that is so bold, even your wildest dreams say goals. I'm your host, Lavi Jai Jones, New York Times bestselling author, sought after speaker, and side eye sorceress, bringing you thought provoking conversations with amazing people who have taken action done scary things, and rocked the boats to an audacious life. Like the late, great John Lewis said, these are the kind of people who are never, ever afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. Professional troublemakers are disruptors for the greater good. They see issues and they come up with creative ways to solve them. Today's guest is the embodiment of all of that. This week, I'm talking to Rich Dennis, the CEO of Shea Moisture, owner of Essence Magazine, and founder of the New Voices Fund. We are in Archive April, and Rich and I originally recorded this interview back in 2018. We were able to record in person at Chicago Recording Company, back when we could do things in person and be together, right? Remember that? And we had this in-depth conversation about how he started his company from selling shea butter on the streets of Harlem and how it grew into a global company, making economic change and how it's hiring people and sourcing product. We talked about his lessons in building a company that is family oriented into this multi-hundred million dollar corporation. And we talked about his insistence on helping the culture. I am excited to welcome my friend and powerhouse, Rich Dennis, to the show. You might know Rich as a creator of Shea Moisture or for his recent purchase of Essence Magazine earlier this year, making it 100% Black-owned again. Rich, thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having me. Yo, to be here. I got Rich in the studio, okay? <laughs> <laughs> pinning Rich down is like pinning down a cloud. But I'm going <laughs> to give people your official bio so they actually really know what you'd be up to. Okay. Born in Liberia. Sundial, the brand CEO, Rich Dennis, came to the U.S. to attend Babson College for business school. And when he graduated in 91, he was unable to return to Liberia because of civil war. Damn, you know what? No. Scrap that piece. I actually don't want to read that piece. I want <laughs> Rich to tell that story. So, anyway, um, Rich's bio, you know what? I'm not even going to give you all his bio. I'm going to just um, have Rich tell his own story. Rich, um, what did you want to do when you were growing up? I wanted to be a citrus farmer. Wait, a citrus farmer. I wanted it. I wanted to be a citrus farmer. You know, I I grew up, um, as you said, in in Liberia, in between Liberia and Sierra Leone, and um, I would always see like like the fruits would just sort of grow wild, right? Mm -hmm. Like like there'd be orange trees, like you know, on the sidewalk, and there'd be mangoes and pineapples, and just it just grew, right? The ground, yeah. the soil was very fertile. Um, but it always struck me how wasteful it was because it would just it would fall to the ground and just spoil oh. or people will people would take them home and 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 they would spoil because there was no um there was no canneries right there there were no there were no process there was no processing so it was just the life the lifespan of the fruit and mm. so you couldn't really turn it into um you can really turn it into an economic benefit for the people Okay. And so I saw that and I, you know, and I remember I, you know, must have been like nine or 10. And I was always like, wow, we got so much fruit. We got so much fruit. But then you would never have any juice. Right? Wow. <laughs> so all this about, fruit around, you still yeah, had no juice. Just, you, 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 didn't, you didn't have any juice or, or you know, it would take forever to squeeze it. Um, and then there'd be people selling it by the roadside. And, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, so it was just, that was, that was just, that was just what hit me. And I'm still going to become a citrus farmer. That I'm, is still a I'm, dream. I'm going to do it. I'm definitely going to do it. So how did you go from, uh, wanting to be a citrus farmer to then coming to the U S to study? Cause you can't study citrus farming <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> in school. <laughs> what was that like? So what, when did you pivot and was like, okay, I'm going to go to the United States. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I grew up at a time where we had a lot of civil unrest in, mm -hmm. in both Liberia and Sierra Leone. Yeah. And, um, you know, my mother's from Sierra Leone, my father's from Liberia and, um, and I was born and raised in Liberia. Um, but, um, during that period of time, we had coup d'etats, we had attempted coup d'etats and, and it was just always some, some, uh, something destabilizing happening. Yeah. And, um, as I got, you know, as I got a little bit older, um, 
you know, and, and seeing what my mother and my grandmother, uh, my, by the way, my grand, my grandmothers on both sides were entrepreneurs, both okay. on my father's side and on my mother's side. And, um, but I saw the challenges that they had in trying to just compete in a society, uh, that didn't, um, that was structured to keep them from being independent mm -hmm. economically, socially, um, all of, all of the, the, the challenges that we know around sort of, um, uh, uh, independence and freedom. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and so I grew up seeing that, but I also saw, uh, their, t their determination, right. Mm -hmm. Um, and their strength that came from, um, not being dependent. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. and so, and so that was always an inspiration for me. So, so I, I, I always from, from jump street, as long as I can remember, because I saw that in my grandmother and my, uh, and my mother and both grandmothers and my mother, um, that always sort of, I think, you know, fueled, um, entrepreneurship in me. And I always wanted, wanted to be an entrepreneur. And, and, and as I've gotten older and I, and I look at, um, how, black women, right, have just been entrepreneurs for time immemorial, okay, right? Yep. We may not acknowledge it, we may not recognize it, but, you know, to keep families together, to, to keep food on the table, to, 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 to keep clothes on our backs, mm -hmm. um, the things that single moms do, every single bit of it is yeah. entrepreneurial, right? Yep. Yep. Um, they just don't get paid for it, right? Facts. And so that's, that's part of the, the, um, what we're trying to do now is try to is trying to invest in them and 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 get them to the places where they're they're not just getting paid for it but they're building scalable businesses. So anyway, to answer your question, um, I um so I got an opportunity to get a scholarship um to come here and uh, I went to Babson College, which is a um which is the number one entrepreneurial school mm -hmm. in the country, um uh was then and still is today. And so that's where I got my training. That's where that's where I got how to think about being an entrepreneur. So I, I that was that was the other thing that sort of woke me up is like, even though I had this in me, yeah. If I went to a different environment, a different learning environment, if mm -hmm. I was placed in the wrong uh, environment, I would be doing something different. Yeah. You know. Um. And so that's the other thing that's important to 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 me is that we try to put ourselves in the environments that uh, enable us. Yeah. to maximize who we are. Yo. So when you graduated in 91, y'all can go back because you and your mom couldn't go back because of the civil war and yeah. the civil unrest in Liberia. Yeah. yeah. And you decided to stay. I didn't have much of a choice. Huh. <laughs> I didn't have much of a choice. You know, my mother came to my college graduation on the last plane that left Monrovia before the Charles Taylor rebels invaded Whoa. the capital city. And in that, in that invasion, our home was destroyed. Oh my gosh. So if my mother wasn't on that plane, my mother probably wouldn't be here with us today. Wow. Right. Um, and, um, and that, that was a real, that was a real, uh, wake up call. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And they call it Miss, Miss Mary Dennis. Yeah. Miss Mary. And yeah. she's still working for the company. Still, still, she's our treasurer. She signs every check. She, yes, she, 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 and you know, she and you know, black penny. mamas are not playing. Oh, she's not playing at all about <laughs> that. Black mamas are not playing. Your money is good and secure. Very secure. Oh, that's the best thing ever. Very secure. Shea Moisture started mm -hmm. what the year after, mm -hmm. or that year? Ninety one. 91. So we we started in ninety one. Um, we were founded in ninety one and incorporated in ninety two. Ah, okay. Yeah. How'd you start? What made you start making natural hair soaps and all that stuff? <laughs> you know, it was, um, it was just, it was what we did. You know, um, my grandmother in Sierra Leone made and sold different hair and skin preps using, uh, local ingredients in, okay. our, in, the, in, 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 in the village market. And so that's what we started doing here. We just, you know, we, wow. we, we needed to survive, yeah. um, needed to, to eat and, um, uh, couldn't like you said couldn't go home and so um started making started make started making shea butter products and 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 uh african black soap and all the things that were made in our local communities um in west africa um i started making them and started as a street vendor on 125th street selling selling them on uh selling them off of a table on 125th 
cut, cut, cutting up shea by the by the <laughs> ounce and by the pound, and black soap by the ounce by the pound, and putting them in Ziploc bags and uh, wow. and getting and getting and and back then nobody knew what they were. Okay. Right. So we had to literally stand on the street and explain to people what shea butter was, and explain to wow. them what African black soap was, and where it came from, and why it was black, and why the shea butter was so good for you, and what was the differences, and all of that. Were you selling or were you pitching? <laughs> were you no. the one handling the money or were yeah. you the one explaining? <laughs> well, you know, the the I was the one explaining. Okay. Um, and um, my mother, as I said, always was the one that handled the money. Right. Um, but we, you know, whatever I made, we'd take home and she, she'd keep it. And we lived in this apartment in Queens. There were 12 of us in a- 12 two, of you? Yeah. And a two, you got to remember, it was, it was it, not just it was a family- but it was everybody trying to escape this war, oh. and we were all in a strange place, and 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 we had to we had to um, support and take care of each other. When did it go from street corner soap to shea moisture? Like, how did that happen? Because people <laughs> see all of that now, yeah. and they don't realize that you started yeah. on the streets. Yeah, you know it. It's um, it's it, it's. I think it's a very interesting. Um, a path for um, young people, right, to, yeah. to sort of study. Yeah. Right, because we, we, we sort of now live in this world of where everything happens instantly. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not, that's not how this was built. Yeah. And it's rare that you get to build anything of value instantly, right? Yeah. Few, few have. Yeah. Um, but um, it's, it's, it's rare that you get to do that. And so for us, it was a journey. It, you know, it took us, people don't realize, it took us 16 years before we ever agreed to even go into retail because wow. retailers at the time, um, we felt, didn't treat um, black people on the same level as they treated any of the other customers, right? Yeah. And yeah. not just by the experience that you you know, you walk in the store and, you know, and people would follow you around. Right. Yeah. Um, but you'd walk in the store and there was nothing in the store for you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were if you were a black woman and you were looking for skin care, your, your, your best option was, you know, Vaseline in, yep. in, in most cases. Johnson right? and Johnson's was Jay, Johnson yeah. and Johnson. Right. Um, or if you were looking for hair products, the only products that were available to you were relaxers mm -hmm. right? And product and products for maintaining relaxed hair. And so our our sort of approach to it was no until you and then the other thing that was that that was also a, a big a big challenge or a big problem for us and you know it's 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 changing because of the the positions that we've taken over the years and because of the the work that we've done um but the messaging in the store mm -hmm. was disconnected from you right the um the the the, the assortment in the store was disconnected from you and from what your needs were. And so we, you know, we, we, we fought with our retail partners. Um, back then they weren't partners. They were, they were just retailers. We fought with them uh, to, to correct some of these things. And so once they started to correct them is when we agreed to go into retail with them. Who was the person who saw you selling soap and was like, there's something here. We want to be a part of it. It was uh, the first, the first. Um, so what, so the first major retailer was uh, was Macy's. Oh, uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a woman named Debbie Murtha who was running their um, uh, their beauty business at the time, and she was just and is just an amazing amazing person and gave us this opportunity. What year was and that? And this was, whew, this was. Uh, Probably two thousand and six, okay, two thousand and seven. Yeah, so it was. It, it, we were out there for a while, really, because, that whole yeah. time. Yeah, because we start. We started. We started with our own table. Then we started selling to other vendors. Okay. Um. Then they started selling to other people. Then we had jobbers come in that were coming from out of the country. Then we had people that were selling at flea markets and at festivals. Oh, wow. And then we would just load up the van and drive up the east coast. You know, the way that we built our distribution was. And uh, you guys don't know this today, but, you know, we used to have this thing called the Yellow Pages. Yes! <laughs> the <laughs> and, Yellow Pages! And pay phones. Yes! You know, and so we just, you know, we'd, 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 make, uh, we'd make the stuff and then we'd load it up in the van and then we'd just drive 
south, right? Um, and we, you know, go to Newark and go to Philly and go to Baltimore and go to DC and we yeah. get into get into a particular city, you know, pull over, go to the phone booth, take out the yellow pages, Whoa. scroll through the yellow pages to see what kind of, you know, stores there were and if they sounded like, you know, the names represented things that uh, uh, we thought would um, uh, um, um, uh, be conducive to what we were doing that yeah. looked like they served black people um, and and then, you know, looked like they served uh, people that were interested in natural products. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we go in and, and then we just go in and randomly walk into a Whole Foods and talk to the people in the Whole Foods. Wow. And, because back then you could literally sell store by store. Huh. Right. Um, into Whole Foods. And so so that's how we built it. So we rolled up, we opened up the yellow pages, make calls. Some people will say, get out of here. Some people will say, come, you know, come, let's see what you got. And we'll wow. go. And we'll, and that's how we that's how we did it. That's how we started. And so we went from there to then um, uh, 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 selling, like I said, the flea markets in place. Then we started to sell to the the natural health food stores, okay. right? Because you go in and, you know, they, they were looking for natural products and uh, we'd sell to them. And then we'd go and um, uh, uh, then we started to to figure out, right, that um, there was such a void in the market for natural products, mm-hmm. right? Um, because there were two things. One, nobody was uh, building a product to serve the needs of women of color. Mm. Nobody was yep. right. They, yep. they just, they were just taking the, whatever product they had, whatever formulation they had, putting it in an ad with a black woman and now saying this product is for you. So the products didn't actually work mm. right for what you needed them to work for. So right. we, we started, we really started to realize that. Um, and so then we started to go to beauty supply stores and the health food stores uh. and, and all these, all these different um, stores. And that's, that's how we, that's how we built our grassroots that's how we built our grassroots distribution all over the country. Wow. Right. Y'all use the yellow pages and yeah. cold called people. Yeah. I'm thinking about how we don't have to do that now. No. <laughs> like, because a lot of us would not do that. That no. takes a no. lot of dedication. A lot of y'all don't even know what the yellow pages is. Correct. I know how, because I'm 33, so I know how, what the yellow pages are. And because we used to have to bring it in. And there were yeah. soup, 700 like, pages yeah, yeah. of everybody's yeah. information. Everybody's number, yeah. And now we have Google. Yeah, exactly. So your first retailer, was was it Macy's? Our first retailer, yeah, our first mass retailer was Macy's, yeah. And that was in 2006, 2007? Yeah, 2006, How did that go? Horribly. Really? It went horribly. Why? It went horribly. Um, like if it was if it wasn't for 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 Debbie's guidance and leadership and 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 real investment in seeing uh us being su- successful. Yeah. Um, we would have we would have never made it. We would have been out of business because you know we took and this and for me I was real proud of this and I remain proud of this. Right, yeah. we took a product that um uh, was made for us by us. Yeah, um, off of a a a, a table on 125th and Fifth Avenue mm-hmm. and put it in the counter in Macy's. Right, same product. Same product. Same product. Okay. That is a that's never been done because typically it gets watered down, right? Yeah, or 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 but just just think about it. Typically they'll 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 alter it. They'll yeah. do different things. Yeah, um, you know, but just the fact that Macy saw the value in what we were doing, and that we had the fortitude to say that we're not changing what we're doing. Yeah, right. To go from a street corner to the glass shelf in Macy's next to all of these other world-class brands Yeah, just goes to show you that what we do is world-class too. Absolutely. Right. We just got to own it and be, and be proud enough of it to not alter it for somebody else's, somebody else's taste or, or distinction. Right. If we're yeah. providing a value to our, to our consumer. So we, we did that, but you know, I wasn't smart enough to understand that there are additional costs <laughs> to, to mass be, producing. <laughs> to mass producing, there are additional costs to um, being inside of a national retailer. You know, they have they have different charges. It's called chargebacks, and mm-hmm. and there's 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 all of these other um, costs that that we didn't know about that we didn't understand. 
Um, and we went in and we put product on the shelf and it sold. The only problem was that the more product we sold, the more money we owed. Right. Oh. <laughs> so, so that was, um, that was an, in, that was a very interesting lesson. And it was an, it was a lesson in, in multiple things. It was, it was a lesson one in, um, making sure that you understand the distribution channel that you're going into. Make yeah. sure you understand how the economics works, mm-hmm. right? Make sure you understand where people make money along that channel, right? Because mm-hmm. it's not just what you sell, right? It's it's what it costs you to sell it. It's what it costs somebody else to sell it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's the leverage that you can have. It's the leverage that somebody else can have. So making sure that you understand all of those before you go into it, um, we didn't we didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. And, um, but it also takes a fortitude to be able to say, you know what, we're going to figure this out. Right. right. Cause we got no other choice, right. Where, where else are we going to go? What else are we going to do? Um, and so, uh, Macy's was a great partner in helping us figure it out once they realized that we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> you sink or swim. You figure yeah. it out along the way. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Macy's, did you lose money on that? Mm-hmm. Wow. Hell yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing is like, you know, as you said earlier, you know, um, it's important that people get to know the history of how these businesses are built, the yeah. challenges that we go through so that when they see it, one, hopefully hearing this, somebody else will, will learn from it and, 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 and take some of it, take some of that advice and prevent the same thing from happening. But the other thing is just so that people know that it can happen. Yeah. You know, um, that you can take something off of the table and put it in a Macy's. It can happen. With because I I think a lot of times with black businesses, too, we think about black businesses as mom and pop shops. Uh How was it the transition between when Shea Moisture was like more grassroots Mm -hmm. and when Shea Moisture became basically a Macy's brand and a just allowed in the mainstream area? What was that shift like for you? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think. There wasn't a shift for us, right? Because we didn't stop selling on the street. You can still go buy our product on the street. You can still go buy our product in the health food store. You can still go buy our product in the, in the, the, there's still jobbers that sell our products. You can still buy our product in the flea market. You can still buy, you can still buy our products, right? Mm -hmm. So that didn't, the idea for us was never to leave anything, right? It was always to build upon what we did. And that's what we've always done. So we go in. You start somewhere, you know, that doesn't mean you have to leave where you started in order to, in order to, to, to move forward. So we just, we just continuously built, right. We, we have that and we still have that foundation today. So it's not, it's not like, you know, um, some, okay, now I got to leave here to go there. So that, that's, that, that's not, that's not how we, that at least that's not how we do. And that's not how we think about it. But then as you elevate, there are different pressures that come along, right. There are different the 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 um the constraints that you have are different, right? Yep. So people think, well, you know, you 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 you're moving all this volume and you're doing all of that. Um, so you know, things must be great. Well, the reality of it is that the 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 what you were doing when you were small was had a magnitude and a scale of pain. Mm-hmm. Now that you're bigger, there's a different magnitude Crazy. of scale <laughs> and pain, <laughs> right? Um, and that's, that's just, that's just, um, that's just the way that we've always looked at it. So we just continue to figure out ways to scale and grow. So growing pains, let's talk about growing pains. Yeah. Cause Lord knows there's a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Those of us who, are uh, who build our businesses and who basically look at ourselves as part of the community that we are building. Yeah. We end up having a lot of growing pains, especially in the black community. Mm -hmm. Um, Last year, Mm -hmm. huge thing happened with Shea Moisture, with the ad, ad, you know, ad gate. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was like Mm -hmm. last year was like the year of brands having ad gate (laughs) uh, where Shea Moisture's ad was not well received because It was like a white woman yeah. in in at about curly hair. Yeah. And I remember I talked to you around that time. Yeah. Um, how what was the one? What and is by your... the way, thank you for that. You know, let me <laughs> let me just let me let because you know, when you're going through it, yeah, right? It's even even in your business and what you're doing, mm-hmm. you're doing something that nobody else has done for you before. Yeah. Nobody's done it in front of you to say, Hey, here's the yeah. Here's the roadmap. Here's what you do. Here's what you don't do. Right. Yeah. And so because of that, we're going to make mistakes. Yeah. We are. And even if we had the roadmap. Yeah. We're going to make mistakes. We're still going to mess up. Right. And 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 when we mess up to have your community um, 
just basically want to devour you. Not not your whole, but you know, elements yeah. of it. Yeah. Right. Um, and 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 negate all that you've done yeah. uh, for one mistake mm-hmm. um, is 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 very very confusing and challenging, right? And so I appreciate uh, the time that you spent just talking to me. That was that was that was much appreciated. Honestly, I'm I'm glad because I'm the, I, I just went through it. It's painful to you know have your people kind of yeah. be like you're the enemy. Yeah. How did you deal with that whole situation? What did you come out of it feeling like? So I'll be honest with you, um, and I I don't know how this is going to come off, but I don't feel any different. Hmm. You know, I don't feel any different because I've always been about my community. I've yeah. always loved my community. I I I can I can tell you that I love my community more than I love me. Yeah. Right. And so. The only thing that that would have done differently would have made me crawl up into a ball and go into a shell and, right. and be like, you know what? I'm not I'm not going to put myself out there. I'm not going to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, that that would have been the only that would have been the only change that could have happened. Right. Yeah. Um, but what it reconfirmed for me was just how much work we have to do. Yeah. Right. How many more businesses have to be able to come up and grow and scale and not abandon our community for our community to appreciate what we go through and how we go through it. And for us to show our appreciation back. Right. Yeah. Which is why I just doubled down. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Right. Yeah. We've got to grow this business. We've got to expand the base. We've got to sell to other people, but that doesn't mean that we have to, to, to abandon our core, abandon our Correct. people, abandon people that got us here. We just have to, explain to them what we're doing. We have to be more thoughtful in how we go about it. We have to slow down and be more patient because they haven't seen this, right? The things that we've done as a business, we haven't seen in our community at all. Right. And, 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 and I haven't seen it either. (laughs) So I'm figuring it out too. There's there's no roadmap. There's no roadmap. Right. So you're going to make wrong turns and you just have to have the, um, you just have to have the conviction in what you're doing. Right. And you have to have the belief in what you're doing. And that belief needs to be grounded around a foundation of love for your community, a foundation Mm -hmm. of love for your people. Um, But also understanding that if your business isn't around, you can't help your people. Yes. Right. So you've got to make decisions that allow the business to grow and scale, Mm -hmm. but that also impact your people. And I think we're starting to show what that model looks like. You know, we've made mistakes along the way, but we've also had some incredible triumphs along the way. Right. So we're not, you know, we're not going to all of a sudden become a different company, become different people um, simply because we make a mistake. Right. It's just a learning and growing. It's learning and growing. And what do you say when people say things like, oh, the Shea Moisture product has changed? You know, what, how did you deal with that? And what is the actual truth? Yeah. Well, the, the, the reality of it is that when you scale up, yeah, it's like, you know, I try to explain it this way, that the simplest way that I can think of it is um, when you're cooking dinner at home for, say, just you and your spouse. Mm-hmm. And then when you're cooking it for, you know, when you now have a family, right? So you've gone from the from yourself, you're cooking for yourself, then you're cooking for two people, then you're cooking for a family of three or four or five. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's 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 always a learning curve as that as you produce more, right? As right. you make more, right? Um, then you go from serving your family to Thanksgiving dinner mm-hmm. and you've got your extended you got your extended family, right? Then you go to, you know, now running a catering business because everybody loves your food. So now you're cooking for 200 people, you know, and then, you know, and it, it scales, right? It scales. And, and when you're making natural products, there are, there are, there's going to be changes as you scale, right? It's like, yeah. you can't make a recipe the same way uh, when you're making it for, you know, two people than when you're making it for 80 people, a hundred people. So that's, that's, that's sort of like the, the basic way to look at it. Yeah. Then the second thing to look at it is, um, or the second thing to understand is that regulations have changed. Ah. Right. So regulations have changed over the, over the past, you know, two decades or so that we've been doing this almost three decades now. And so there we've, we've never put, um, harmful chemicals in our products. Right. Right. And we've always used natural, natural ingredients in our products, but 
when we were doing, when we started doing this to where we are now, the science around natural ingredients, yeah. it wasn't where it is. It was in its infancy. Mm. So I give you an example. There's an ingredient that we um, used to use called japonica, and it was a preservative. Okay. Um, and uh, it was made from honeysuckle, right? Okay. Completely natural ingredient. But over time, it reacts to behave more like a paraben. Oh, okay. Okay. Right? So if you if you if if you're true in your beliefs, then you don't you're not even if it's not a paraben, but it's gonna behave like a paraben, you're gonna take, you're gonna it, take out, it out. Right. So when you take it out, that changes your entire ingredient deck. Uh, right. So now if you put in more of something else to compensate for that for that preservative so it doesn't go bad or you put in less of it or you put in three or four other things to compensate for what that was doing, mm-hmm. then that changes your ingredient labels, right? And then people say, oh, you've changed <laughs> you've changed the formula. Got right? it. So okay. so 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 whether it's learning more about the science and knowing more about how um natural ingredients interact with our bodies. Yeah. Whether it's uh uh rule changes that that happen you know, in, you know, so now we want to sell to Europe, right? So we have you black have people different. that live in Europe too. Yeah. And the, the regulations in Europe are different than the regulations here. And we're making products for here. So now we're making product that can serve serve the, the, the black people in Europe as well as the black people here. So now we have to make a product that's standard for those because we can't afford to make two, two different, different products. Two different products because otherwise we'd be out of business and then the brand that you love so much wouldn't be there, period, right? Because we couldn't afford to do it. So there are these things that we wow. haven't experienced in our communities that we haven't seen in our communities and that hasn't been explained to us. And so that's why I'm so open about what we do and how we do it. Because I think that is that within itself is a value add to our community. If there's another yeah. company that can come behind us from the black community that can do what we do and do it at the scale that we do it, because we paved the way, not just yeah. they saw us do it, but we explained to them how we did it, what the what the wins were, what the losses were, how yeah. we recovered from them, how we rode the wins, how we recovered from the losses, then we've done a great service. I mean, that's that's the whole reason behind the New Voices Fund, right? It's we should take the 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 the, the revenues, the profits, the benefits that we've gotten from doing business in our community mm-hmm. and invest it back in our community so that there will be more Shea Moistures out there. We don't just want one Shea Moisture. One Shea right. Moisture doesn't do it for us, right? No. We need hundreds, yeah. right? And that's how we will change the plight in our community. That's how we will have the economic independence that we need. That's how women in our communities will be able to make the decisions for themselves that they need to make, not being influenced by 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 others, right? So yeah. that's what this that's what this is about. This is this is actually right on point because I we hear so much so many stories of black people failing that those of us who are considered successful, we have to be transparent about the journeys, about the pain, about the grime, about how we finally cut through it. Mm-hmm. Because if we're so used to seeing failing. We need to also get used to seeing success and knowing what comes behind it. Because I think what ends up happening is people build narratives that they think they know, right? And they run with that. And they're like, this is what happened. So I always love people like you who are transparent about the journey. It's why I'm insisting on being transparent about my journey Mm -hmm. is people see the success, forget about all the struggles and don't know how they can also get to the success. Yeah. So that's really important. Yeah. I mean, now, I, I think that's one piece that's important. I think yeah. the other piece that's important is we see the success and it's almost like we're waiting for it to fail. Yes. Yes. Right? We're waiting it's, for the shoe to drop. Right. We're waiting for the shoe to drop instead of, and, and I shouldn't say we, because that that's unfair. There are those, yeah. right? It's not everybody, right? Because if it was everybody, none of us would be here. Correct. Right. But there are those who, um, I wouldn't say root to see to see failure, mm-hmm. but are quick to um, are quick to want to destroy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When something isn't working the way that they want it to work. Yeah. Right. And that's I mean, look, everybody, every consumer has a choice. That's what that's what this is about. Right. You can they can choose to listen to what you you have to say or not. Right. They can choose to download your podcast or not. Mm-hmm. Right. But to actively try to destroy your podcast, yeah, 
right? Is a different is a different thing. different energy, right? It's a whole different it's a whole different energy. Yeah, and is is and I don't think that the, the one of the things that I think that gets missing in in that whole um, cancel movement that we're quick to have, ah, yes. right? Yeah, the thing that gets missing is what does that say to the next entrepreneur behind me? Hmm. How much more terrified are they? Correct. To try to drive and grow. Because they've seen. They've seen. Mm. They've seen the arrows pointing right. at you. They've seen it and they see the hits that you take. And then it's like, well, do I really want to take that? Right. Or the other thing that you 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 see as a result of is that people just sort of like, yo, you know what? I'm going to build this. I'm going to make some money. I'm going to be out. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And and nothing goes back to the community. Yeah. Right. And so so I just think that, look. There's plenty of reasons to cancel to cancel brands and businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, just understand why you're doing it, right? And understand who you're hurting by doing it. Understand what the value is, right? as opposed to reacting to something. And oh, even as mad yeah. as you can be, you know, as upset you can be, and as as deservant as as somebody can be of 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 or or a brand or a business can be of of backlash. It's also important to understand what that says to our community and about our community and how much more damage that could cause. Yeah. And no, I remember the vitriol against Shea Moisture. I was like, wow. Whew. <laughs> and it's a good point of us. I hadn't thought about the idea of how does it terrify other people who are trying to do the same thing. And in conversations that I've had with other entrepreneurs who are black, people are constantly afraid of cancel culture and yeah. now it's a part of their work. They're thinking about it whenever they're like, Oh my God, we want to do this thing and tell the story. But we're afraid of what Twitter's going to say. Yeah. How do you make sure you don't have that in your psyche when you're running this business and when you are showing up as the face of the business yeah. too because yeah. you're not the only person who runs yeah. Shea Moisture. You are the you you are the of course CEO. Yeah. But I'm one person. But you're one person. I'm one person, right? Um and it, and and it it's also um you know when you when you stop to think about it the 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 environment that that creates, right, mm-hmm. um, inhibits our growth as a community, right? And and you don't, that's not what we're here for. Yeah. You know, we're, we're here to grow our communities, right? Yeah. But we, in order to do that, we got to be able to take risks. So one risk that you did was decide to sell Sundial to Unilever. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I almost saw the inception of it, but I didn't realize I was seeing it. Uh-huh. Last year, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was looking at it, but mm. I didn't realize what I was mm. looking at because mm. I randomly ran into you in Miami <laughs> at BT Leading Women Defined. Uh. And I was like, Rich, what are you doing here? This is a conference full of women. <laughs> Were you there to have a conversation with AC? No, you know, AC wasn't at Union Lever at there? the time. No. Oh, wow. No, 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 no. AC wasn't at Union Lever at the time. So what no. made you decide to sell? Like, how did this whole thing happen? Because you making the decision to, mm-hmm. you know, go under the Unilever umbrella in this way is huge. Yeah. And it took your business from like an actual family business mm-hmm. in the core way to mm-hmm. now like a brand in the way people a think global, about like a, a global, global business. business. Right? Yeah. A global business that's family run. That is fa- Come on and say that. Right. You know, and, and, but that's, that's also part of the, the learning and the growing and the teaching in our community. Yeah. Right. Because it's, that that deal is powerful on so many levels, oh, levels. right? Um, and I don't know that we've we've taken the time to really and and we should do that to really um, explain the nuances of the power that's behind that, right? Let's talk about it. Um, yeah, let's let's do that. So I don't think anybody has really understood. No. Yeah. No, let's talk no, about it. No. Let let let's do talk about it. So the first thing is. Um, as an independent brand mm-hmm. and as an independent business, the capital that's required to scale and to continue to grow mm-hmm. and to compete. Because, you know, if you if you step back and look at, so we went into retail in 2007, let's call it 2007. So 11 years ago. Right, 11 years, just 11 years ago, right? When you walked into the aisle, there was virtually no product for black women, mm-hmm. virtually none, right? There was a four-foot section in the store that everything that 
a black woman needed should have been on that. That's the only space they gave her. Yeah. Right. So therefore there was very little on the shelf for her. Right. We came into that and said, no, that's not right. That's not fair. This is not how you serve us. And if you don't serve us properly, we're not going to sell to you. Mm -hmm. Right. And we worked over these years. Now you go in the aisle and there's like, it's only <laughs> handmade. There's, there's calls by nature. There's, there's yeah. You know, and, a, and and what people don't realize is that when we went into Target, we brought other brands with us. Oh, wow. Yeah. We didn't just go in and say, hey, this is ours. And we did. we're like, no, this isn't going to work if it's just our brand. Mm -hmm. Right. We need other brands that service black women. We need other black businesses that service the black community to be on this shelf with us. So, so that's, 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 if you think about it just from that, those very beginnings, okay. what we changed, right? We changed the shopping experience for black women okay. in this country, period. Right. You walk in now, there's options for you. The major corporations don't sit around and say, Oh, that's cute. You guys came in here and you took all our shelf space. Yeah. They're all, oh, Great, you guys are you get you got you guys are doing community commerce. You're giving back to the black community. We love what you're doing. This is great, right? That's not what happens. What happens is they say, "Wow, we're losing share to this company." Yeah, we've got all these resources over here. Now we're going to go pour all of these resources in to compete against you. Uh, so if you look at what happens to the black brands that come into the market, they can grow, but so far. Because the major brands with the major budgets and the major dollars and the major infrastructure are all going after that, after that consumer. Hmm. And we in our community want to buy black, say we're going to buy black, yeah. in most cases do buy black, but many of us also don't, right? Yeah. Many of us buy buy brands from other companies and 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 they have the opportunity that they have choice and they can spend the dollars where they want and they can do that. So that's another next time we come in we, I want to talk about um the uh, the cost of buying black and how we're not always willing to pay the cost. Right? Yes. We want we want to we we talk about it but we're not willing to pay to pay the cost that it takes to do it. Word. And thereby what it costs us in our community over time because we don't build sustainable businesses in our community. Yeah. So you'll go to the store and there'll be a, 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 a black owned store here and there'll be a, you know, say a Korean owned store here. And um, the umbrella here is in the black store is $5 and the umbrella in the Korean store is $2 and 50 cents. And yes, there's a big price difference there. So you go and you buy the, the umbrella for $2 and 50 cents. Yeah. Well, it's got nothing to do, in, in my opinion, necessarily just with the fact that they're Korean. I don't think that's that that's that's almost irrelevant. But what it does have to do with is that in Little Korea, there are 10 Korean banks mm -hmm. that they can go to and get the financing to buy that umbrella. Yep. How many we got in our community? I can't name one right now. Right. Not one black okay. bank. So so if I can't if I can't finance my inventory, then how am I going to pay for it? That is the problem. Yeah. Right. So I'm paying from the dollars I can scrape up from here. I can scrape from there. I can scrape up from there to buy. And then I got to sell it at, at more of a price. Then I haven't had the opportunity to watch two or three generations build, build the business. Right. Yeah. How do I provide customer service? How mm -hmm. do I how do I finance my inventory? How do I how do I do all of these things? Right. The Korean store next door. You know, you've got, you know, two, three generations running that store. Yep. Right. So they understand those things. And I'm not saying that their customer service is greater than ours, but right. at least they understand the concept of what happens there. Let me not that we don't understand the concept, but they've had time to practice. They've had practice and they've right? seen examples. They've seen examples and they know they know how to do and how not to do. Right. So we walk in the store and we say, oh, you know, the 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 the, the, the stink attitude that we get in 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 in, in this store and in, in, in the in the black owned store. We're going to go now to be clear. I'm not saying that this is everybody and everywhere. I'm just saying that but it's examples this is an example and this yeah. this is a reality. So all of you, you know, you, you start to add up those challenges. And it makes it very difficult for us to actually build these businesses. This is a long way about 
answering your question. Yeah. It makes it difficult for us to build these businesses, for us to sustain these businesses, and for us to scale these businesses, right? You can only grow so far. That's it. So why was Unilever, why, one, why was it the right time? Two, yeah. why was this the right partner? Yeah. So, 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 so if you, if you take the, the things that I've just said into, into context, yeah. right? So now we are in a place of where we've come into a market that nobody was serving. We start serving that market. The marketplace starts to see the value of serving that market. They start to invest dollars behind it and infrastructure behind it that we don't have yeah. and dollars that we don't have. Then you look at the history of what's happened when that's happened. Hmm. Right. So you go back and you look at the brands that came before us, the soft sheens, the pro lines, the mm -hmm. Johnson, uh, the Johnson products. You look at those businesses and those businesses um, were either sold. Right. Or they have shrunk dramatically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because they just don't have the resources to compete. So I look at it and I'm like. What we've done here is something incredible, spe incredibly special for black women, mm. not just from the product perspective and, 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 and the hair care and, and the skin care and all the, the beautiful products that we produce specifically for her and for her needs, but also for all of the black women in the supply chain in Africa, all those 20,000 women that Tell are in that supply that. chain. Tell us about that. So that's the thing a lot of people, you don't talk about often. Not, well, not yeah. often enough because people don't realize yeah. that you're employing women yeah. on the ground in yeah. West Africa. Yeah. Tell us more. Yeah. So the, the, you know, I told you about how we started in the products of, you know, black soap and shea butter and coconut oil, all of these indigenous ingredients, right? Yeah. These indigenous ingredients are, are harvested by women in these villages and in these communities. Traditionally, they have been at the very bottom of the pyramid. Right. So basically what they have only had the opportunity to, to do was the most dangerous part of the job, which was go out into the go out into the the the, the, the wild mm -hmm. and pick the nuts. You know, they get bitten by snakes, they get Oof. stepped on. I mean it's just they they you know, and gather, right? And then in Shea, the Shea season is really three months in the year. Okay. They don't have, they didn't have warehousing to store them. They didn't have equipment to process them. So they've got, you know, basically they can only work and earn an income for, for three months. And then the traders come in, right, and to, to buy the nuts from them. So because there's only a three-month window, the traders will just wait until the last month. And try to get everything for cheap. For cheap. Oh. And so these women are going through all of this and then, you know, not not even making enough to cover the time that they're that they're out there away from their children or away from their families trying trying to make a living perpetuates the cycle of poverty. Yeah. And so, you know, I grew up seeing that mm. and I was like, no, we can do this differently. So what if we not just bought instead of going through the traders and the middlemen, we're going to go buy it directly from, from the women, yes. but we're going to pay them above what the local um, wage rates are. Right. Right. Above what the men make in them, because there's two different wage rates now. You, 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 and that, and of that's course. the other thing, the same challenges there are here, right. Mm -hmm. Where, where women are making so much less than the men are. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing there for doing the same work. Right. So what we went in and said was, okay, we will buy directly from you. We will pay you above what the going rate is. Yeah. And then the products that we make from this, we'll put them in our community commerce product uh, products. Those community commerce products will take 10% from the sales of that. When we bring it here and we sell it to you, yeah. we will take 10% of that and we invest it back in you. Wow. We invest it in your infrastructure. So you have warehousing. So you don't have to, to, to only work for three months. You can work year round. Yeah. You can store and you can sell year round. So if, if you want to sell to a trader, you can sell them at, at, at market rates six months after the season is over because you have storage. You want to, you want to create a more um, finished product. Yeah. Here's processing equipment. We train you. Wow. So now you can process, you can process. So instead of selling just the raw material, you're now selling finished or semi-finished goods at a higher price, creating value in the supply chain. And then we take that, that process product and we buy that. We bring that here. We put it in the product. We sell the product and we give them 10 cents back on the Yo, dollar. Yo, that's incredible. Yeah. That is amazing. But that's what I needed to do more of. So you ask me why. Yeah, why? That's what I needed to do more of. We've been in business almost 30 years. Yeah. We only got 20,000 women in that supply chain. 
Okay. There's millions. So when you hear it, it's, oh, 20,000, oh, that's, you guys are doing great. But the problem that we're trying to solve for, which is economic equality, yeah. right? We're not going to get there with 20,000. On my own, I could probably double this thing over the next 10 years and we'll probably get, okay, so we get 40,000 women. There's millions and millions and millions of women that we haven't impacted. So what I needed to do was to find a way to scale this so that I could go from 20,000 to 100,000 to 200 to 300,000. And to do that, I needed a partner with a global reach hmm. because I couldn't build it in the time. First of all, I don't have the capital to do it. Right. I don't have the time to do it. These companies have been around for hundreds of years when we weren't even allowed to own companies, when we didn't even own ourselves. <sighs> when we were property. Right. Yeah. You know, so 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 we've got to find different ways to grow and scale and impact our communities. So that's the way that, that we, 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 we're doing it. And so that was, that was the first thing is now we can scale these, these, these communities. We can, we can bring real um, uh, 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 leverage, right. In, in the supply chain, we can bring, we can bring real change to many, many, many more women. So that was, that was the first reason. The second reason was, after we had the the um the ad yeah. and we had all of the all of the um the backlash what we didn't do was run away from it what we did do was step right into it and said look we know this is what we were trying to do this wasn't executed the way that we should have executed it mm-hmm. it was it was it was it was it was done in error right but it wasn't our intent yeah right it wasn't our intent to abandon you as a consumer. It wasn't our intent to to be insensitive. It wasn't our intent to do any of those things. Right. But we understand that we hurt you and we apologized, right, for doing that. But what we're also clear to say is that, but we still have to grow this business. Mm-hmm. We still have to scale this business so that we can continue to invest back in our community. So what we did was we went out and we did. And in fact, I talked to you about it. Yep. We went out and we did a series of, and they, they continue to this, to this day. We did town halls and listening sessions. And we talked to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of black women all over this country. Yeah. Right. Went, sat down, listened, heard what, what the pain was. What was the pain? Explain. The pain, the pain was many, man. The pain, yeah. the pain, the pain, the pain. Was, we got pain. One was, Effie, we all got pain. We got pain, yeah. you know, and. And and that was the last thing that we ever wanted to do was to create pain, yeah. right? Um, or to trigger pain, right? Facts. Which was probably which was probably um, more accurate. And so we um, we sat and we listened and we heard, um, you know, about brands that come in and sort of um, use our community, right, and then leave us. It became analogous to. Um, uh, you know, relationships in our community. Yeah. It became analogous to our um, uh, 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 relationships, not just within our community, but outside of our community. Um, the, the you know, our political system, our, our social justice system, our economics, just, and the thing that we heard the most was the economic pain. Mm, right? Okay. And that was, and I was like, you know, we're doing all of this stuff in Africa. And yeah, we have these, these 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 education programs and these scholarships that we do and 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 that's great, um, but how do we really have impact at scale here? How do we really really change the lives of these women that have invested in us? And the way that you do that is by investing back in them, mm-hmm. right? Um, but you need capital to do that. You need money. You need money to do that, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, what's the asset that we have? What can we, what can we do? Mm. What can we do? Talk about taking yeah. a pain point and turning it into like a blessing point. Yeah. Know that this podcast is named after my second New York Times bestselling book, Professional Troublemaker, The Fear Fighter Manual, which is available now wherever you get your books. With this book and with everything that I do, I am on a mission to help a million people live audaciously. To do that, they must fight their fear. So think of it. A million people who are out there standing on the edge of something great and need that little push of encouragement. That push to be the domino, to say the hard thing, to have the hard conversation. 
A million people kicking their fears to the curb and stepping into the life that they've been dreaming of. A million people asking for a raise. A million people, you know, starting a fierce job that they were not, they're not sure they're ready for. You know, a million people doing something that feels so big that their wildest dreams say goals. My goodness. That is what writing this book has done for me. What it's already done for those who are reading it and gifting it to others. This book has empowered people to say yes to things that they were previously saying no to. It's empowered people to have tough conversations they weren't going to have before. People have asked for raises and promotions and gotten them after reading this book and finding the courage to speak up. The domino effect of what has been happening when a few people have decided not to live in the realm of fear has been amazing. Think of what could happen if a million people stop letting fear be the first factor in their decision making. An audacious mission like that can't happen without you. So let's get this book in the hands of as many people as possible. Buy a copy of Professional Troublemaker for yourself or as a gift for your friend who needs a push. I know it'll change your life like it's changed mine. And I know it will change lives of all these people who touch it because domino effects are real. Professional Troublemaker, which is available in hardcover or audiobook, I narrated it, and ebook, is now at professionaltroublemakerbook.com. Order it there or wherever you buy your books. So from the listening sessions is what made you look at Essence, like, can we own Essence? Yeah. Well, what? the first thing that it did was it made me think about, well, we've created a lot of value in Shea Moisture. Yeah. If we can create more value by giving ourselves an infrastructure and a platform and a global partner to grow our community commerce so we can grow those cooperatives, right? And then we can take the capital that we get out of the sale of it and invest it back in the black community. Mm -hmm. Then we can really do things at scale. Mm -hmm. So, so what we did was, so when you think about, so we, we, we partnered with Unilever, right? My family still runs the business, right? We now have a platform upon which we can take these 20,000 women and move them into the two, three, four, five hundred thousand 500,000 uh, numbers simply by growing Shea Moisture. Mm-hmm. If black women go out and buy Shea Moisture, there will be 20 to 50 to 80 to 100,000 women, mm. 250, 300,000 women in Africa that will come above the poverty line just like we've moved these 20, wow. right? All it takes is buying Shea Moisture shampoo. Then- we take additional proceeds and we put them in new voices. And so we say, I actually want to walk there. So yeah. what again? Before we get to essence. So before you get to essence, too. you wanted to. <laughs> so wait, which came first? New voices, the idea for new voices or was it the new essence voice, No, new voices first. Let's talk about that. Because I thought it was first. essence first no, and then new voices. No, no, it was new voices okay, first. Okay, so you talk to you and Lever and you're like, cool, I'll partner with you. But I need this. Talk about that. I need this. Yeah. I'll partner with you, but I need this. I need to grow my I need to grow my supply chain. I yeah. need to grow my community commerce model globally, right? And I need to take a hundred million dollars and I need to invest it in black women entrepreneurs. And you said that in the meeting. I said that in the very first meeting. What did they say? They said yes. They said that's Immediately? Why. Yeah. They said, that's why we want to partner with you because you see the world differently and you're doing things differently and you're doing them for your community. And we can learn from this and do it in other communities. Before that meeting and you were like, I'm about to ask for a hundred million dollars just for yeah. black women. Did you have to practice that number in, in the no. mirror? Because that's a big number. No, but I knew what I needed. Huh? I knew what it was going to take. You didn't think it was too crazy? No. In fact, I think it's too small. Wow. Because it is, if that. you think about it, in, yeah. the, in the overall scheme of things, it is too small. Absolutely. But right? I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm always, people, you know, just when talking about numbers for their own mm-hmm. everyday lives, mm-hmm. when they're negotiating salaries, people freak out at the idea of even asking for $100,000. Yeah. And you walked in the room and asked for $100 million. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And they yeah. said yes immediately. Yeah. Because that's the type of organization it is. That's the type of people that we're dealing with, right? They also understand the challenges that we have in our communities. They just haven't had a vehicle through which they could be helpful Hmm. because they don't come from here. Right. Right. They're helpful in their own communities. Yeah. Right. But, and they have all the intent. Because Dove does a lot of like women's empowerment work. Like, yeah. Yeah, Right. They're the first ones to get out and do that. Yeah. Right. But they just don't have, they're not there. They don't know. Right. And so, so, so that was, so that, 
was the first piece. So that was the first meeting. It was the first meeting. New Voices Fund. Meeting number one. You already set $100 million just to invest in black women entrepreneurs yeah. and building black businesses. Yeah. Okay, so second meeting. Yeah. Second meeting, then we wrote out the manifesto. <laughs> we said, wow. this is what, this is what, uh, this is how this company will run. This is how Sundial will run. Um, you know, this is how the family will run it. You what, know, what, is the, is how, what are the important pieces of the manifesto that you made your work? Well, audience? one, that our community commerce model continues. Okay. Right. Two was new voices. Yep. Right. And then we started to get into the real details of what you the like, brand My mom means. is going to stay treasurer. Yeah. yeah. That my sort my of brother, because yeah. your brother is also yeah. a huge part. Of, he's yeah. is he CF. What is he? He's, uh, he's head of sales. He's head of sales. Okay. He's head of so sales. So you did that. Yeah. When did Essence come into the story? So so while we were doing that, um, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal that um, Time Inc. was selling some of its assets, and wow. Essence was one of the assets. Yeah. So you know, not having anything to lose, <laughs> I called. Shoot your shot. <laughs> I called. I was like, I read in this article that um, essence is for essence is for sale, and because for me, you know, I've always understood that um, you know that there's a there's a there's an African uh, there's an African po- proverb, mm-hmm. right? And it says, until the lion learns how to write, the hunter will always be the hero. Mm-hmm. Facts. I love right? that proverb, yeah. And so so for me, it's like, you know, we need to own our narrative. It doesn't matter what it costs. You can't put a price tag on our narrative, on our culture, on our freedom, on our ability to express ourselves, on our ability to own the distribution of our expression. Yep. You can't, right? And so I was like, I think that you guys should sell it. To me. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. And here, no, and but here's why. Here's why. Right? Um, and they had already been in a bidding process. And so there were 40 other bidders. For essence? For essence. And you were probably the only black one. Or probably few. There were very few. Very few black there ones. There were very few. Because not a lot of us have the capital to be able to even walk up to somebody and say, I want to buy Essence magazine. Yeah. yeah. How did you win out? Yeah. What did you bring to the table that was so different from everybody else? I mean, I think I think for one, I was willing to pay the price that they that they wanted, and to me, I thought that was an I thought that was a cheap price for our voice. Wow! Right? So, so that I think that was I think that was to me there wasn't a price that I wasn't going to pay. Wow! Right? Um, because I thought it was a it was a cheap price to to to, to free our voice for this culture shaper. Voice. Yeah. This culture shaping publication because we don't have many anymore. No, that are still in print. I that think Essence still, still is probably the only one I can think of off the top of my head. We've lost the vibes yeah. and we've lost the honeys and the suede's and yep. Ebony only puts out one like every year. Yeah. So wow, so that's how you got Essence. Yeah, you also made the choice to give executives like some stake in it. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, the, the, and that's, and those are the things that, you know, like I said, when you, when you're, um, when you're doing something that you haven't done before, you know, you're going to learn, right? And you, but, and there isn't a roadmap to do this. But um, it's important that the people that are building these businesses feel connected economically to the business, not just emotionally. Yeah. Right. Because all too often we don't have that. We don't have that opportunity. So so what we wanted to do was to set up a business where uh, where the 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 the, um, the executives could have an equity. So the people that are truly at the top leading the business could. And so that's what we continue to that's what we continue to work towards and, and to work on. So, um, you know, we just made some some we just added some new executive leadership to the team. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, Michelle is my goodness i mean an amazing incredible michelle business E-Banks. leader michelle ebank shout mm-hmm. out to michelle um has i mean i've i thought you know i mean i've learned so much from her and i continue to learn every day and and just her steadfastness and her strength and her 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 um emotional intelligence and her her grit yeah. right and her and her passion and her love for for black women and 
and what she's doing over there and how she's running that business, how she's transforming that business is just, I mean, I couldn't be, I couldn't be more proud. It, What's your it's, vision it's, for Essence? What do you want to come out of Essence Magazine? Because I see you see the value in it. What in your dream world, what do you think Essence stands for? I mean, I think, you know, the, what, what we've, um, what we've sort of communicated is what, what is what Essence should have stood for under Time Inc. and what Michelle and the team fought to to make happen mm -hmm. and um, now have the absolute opportunity to do that. And that is to serve black women deeply. Yes. Right. That is that is what Essence was developed for. That is what it was made for. That is what our community has expected. That is what they've they've rallied around. And that's what we're doing is we're figuring out every single way to serve black women deeply so that they get, and it's not just, you know, when I saw Essence, I didn't see just a magazine. I mm -hmm. saw a community. Mm -hmm. I saw a community that was ignored, a community that was underserved. And you can say, well, what do you mean by ignored? There's all these other publications. The reality of it is that, as you said, many of them are no longer in the form, at least are not around or at least not functioning at the levels that they were. Yeah. Right. Um, there are, so what that has given rise to is, um, general market publications. You know, I, I love to see this, right. They'll, you know, one month a year or two months a year, they'll put a black woman on the cover yep. and, and then we'll all celebrate and <laughs> they, they don't give a shit about us. Nope. They just, they just care that we're going to, we're going to buy their book because, you know, we're excited that they're, they're recognizing us. I want a place where we're recognized every day, every day, right? And and a place where we go and spend our money with every day, so that we can continue that recognition every day, right? Yeah. And we're seeing when we don't do that, we're seeing what happens socially in this country. We're seeing it, right? Yeah. Politically, we're seeing it. Economically, we're seeing it. Um, so we've just got to we've got to we've got to get to a place of where our community can have the places that they can invest their money. And spend their money and, and and get value for what they're spending, right? So we talked a little bit earlier about the cost of buying black. Yeah. One of the things that we're looking to 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 to, to try to do and, and to continue is not just help bring other companies along, but in the companies that we that we work with, when you engage with that company, you should feel like, wow, that's the best product I ever had. That's the best experience I ever yeah. had. They get me. They know me. They're here for me. And so that's what we're gonna try to do with it. So back to the new voices fund. First of all, th this portfolio is getting ridiculous, like <laughs> which is amazing because I don't think we've never seen anything like this. This very yeah. intentional push of money because people will be like, "Oh, I love black businesses. Money is what they need." Yeah. So right now, so the first grantees mm. are the Lip Bar, Mented, and the McBride Sisters Wine, yeah. among others. Yeah. There's a lot of black noir pixie dust in this list. So you've dedicated thirty million dollars to that first round of eight companies. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Tell us about how dope it is to invest in this newest cohort of bosses <laughs> and why, well, I mean, I already know why you know it's um important. Why, what made you pick the companies that you picked in this first round? Yeah. You know, it's, um, first of all, I'm, I'm proud to say that those companies picked us. Mm. Right. I'm really, really proud to say that. I love me some lip bar right. and mentor. Oh, aren't they? Aren't they? Just... I wear lip bar all. Whenever I'm on a stage, I like to wear lip bars, boss lady color. Uh -huh. Yeah, because why not? Yeah, why you know? not? Because that's what you are. Come on, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like, what made you pick them and, yeah. and just the other cohorts? Yeah. yeah. No, they picked us. You know, they they um they came, they reached out and said, "Hey, we hear you're doing this, and this is what we're doing, and we want to be your partner." And we said, "Okay, here's what we're doing. Here's how we." is how we think about it. You know, we don't, we, because of, again, this learning of building a business that um, in a space and in a way that no one else has done before and, mm -hmm. and we didn't have a roadmap, we made a lot of mistakes, right? Yeah. And we learned from those mistakes. So we don't just want to be a funding source, right? We want to also help you avoid those mistakes. Yeah. We want to help you think through the challenges up front, right? And say, hey, you know, you don't have to do what I say, but here's how I've thought about it. When I've been faced with this, here's what I've done. Here's what worked. Here's what didn't work. Or you know what? I haven't been faced with this, but because of my travels all these years, I know these 10 people 
that do different things and that at least one of them could have, let's go talk to them, right? So so what we want to do with it is, you know, we call it the ACE model, right? Okay. So it's access, it's capital, and it's expertise. Hmm. So we want to bring you expertise. We want to bring not just our knowledge base, but our entire network, right? And have you have access to that entire network and not, hey, pick up the phone and call so-and-so. We are doing it in a very structured, organized way and in a very in a way that breeds accountability so that when you go have these conversations and there are action items that you go and you take these actions and you report back that you've because that's the way that you help to avoid a lot of the pitfalls. Right. Right. Um, the other one is access. You know, we've built a lot of relationships with retailers and with 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 media buyers and with right all these different spaces that we're in. So partnering with those uh, um, those 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 people, those companies to provide access. So if we're going to put in the capital and we're going to provide the the expertise, we're going to do training, we're going to provide support, we're going to help with supply chain, we're going to help with all of these things that it takes to make a business in those environments successful, then we want retail partners that are also going to to do that, right? And yeah. then you're going to get shelf space because they make money in this community too, right? So they should invest back into this community and we should provide them a vehicle through which they can invest back. You know, a lot of times we go in and say, oh, you guys don't put anything in the community. What are you doing? It's not that they don't want to, it's that they don't know how to. They don't know how to. So right. We, yeah. Um, I'm not saying it's not, you know, sometimes they want to, sometimes they don't. The right. ones that want to, right, may not know how to. And the ones that don't want to, when they see success, will want to. Mm -hmm. So Correct. we've got, in either case, we've got to provide them the conduits through which they can help in our communities the way that we want them to, and not necessarily in these in these ways that are oftentimes well-meaning, but not necessarily effective. So what is the one thing that you want every small business owner or somebody who wants to be one to keep in mind as they're about to build a business or whatever, go after their dreams? Don't, don't accept the no's. Don't accept the no's. Don't accept the no's. And that's a common one, right? A lot of people say that and share that. Um, but I think it's, I think it's a critical one because when you're starting, there's going to be plenty of people that are going to say no. Yeah. And they're going to, and those no's are going to stop you from doing things that you want to do. Right. Yeah. Um, so don't accept them. If you know that what you're doing is the right thing. Now, let me be clear just because I'm saying don't accept them. Doesn't mean I'm saying don't listen. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Understand why they're saying no. Mm -hmm. Don't just dismiss it. Oh, this person doesn't like me. They don't like black. And sometimes that may be the case. But listen and understand to prove for yourself that that is truly the case. Listen with an open mind that says, well, if I were in his shoes, would I do this? Would if I say I were yes in to her me? Shoes, would I say yes to me? Yep. Right. And why would I say yes to me? And what is what is what is what is it that I need to do? that makes it imperative that they say yes to me. And what is it that I need to do that makes it so hard for them to say no? Where exactly. They make it so hard for them to say no that their yes just makes all the sense in the world. Exactly. Exactly. So it's not just yeah. saying no and then, you know. And then be like, ah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Adjust and come back. Exactly. Rich, like as all of this madness is going on around you, as you're now adding more businesses to portfolio, as you're doing Essence, does your family miss you? <laughs> <laughs> that is what I wonder. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think, and and I think that's the other thing that's um, uh, pretty um, pretty necessary in our community, right? Yeah, is for our families to be a part of us building, mm. right? Not just one person go off in a corner and do it, right? And I know people say, you know, family businesses are hard. You know what? The reality of it is they are hard, but mm -hmm. it's like we talked earlier about the cost of buying black. Mm -hmm. That's the price that we must pay for stability in our community. Hmm. Right. That's the price that we must pay so that our children can grow up and see what it is and understand the challenges and learn how to deal with conflict yep. and learn how to deal with selfishness. Right. And learn how to deal with all of these things that make it hard to be in a family business. Now, having said that, if you have a family member in your business that can't perform, you have to take them out. Yeah. If you have a family business, a member in the business that can't scale, you have to bring people above them. 
you have to have the the fortitude to make the hard decisions. Mm. Just because you're a part of a family that's in a business doesn't entitle you to be in that business. Mm. Facts. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's it. So you have to carry your weight in that business. How do you create the line? Like at Thanksgiving, how are you making sure you and your mom and your brother are not talking Shea Moisture business? <laughs> we are. You are? <laughs> why, why shouldn't we? <laughs> That's what put the turkey on the table. <laughs> <laughs> There's no like, no, you guys, we're about to cut the turkey. Yeah. Stop talking about business. We'll talk about that in three minutes. No, 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 no. no, no. That's, what, that's, that's the thing. It's the commitment to it. That's what put the turkey on the table. If it wasn't the, for that, we won't be able to cut the turkey. But like, turkey. how do you do with the conflict? Like if your mom, let's say, for example, forgets to sign a check, how mm-hmm. are you like... Mom, I'm your boss. You just messed that up a little bit. Well, the first thing is she's my boss. So she's your boss. <laughs> she's my because boss. Because she's a money check. Yeah. Right. So I, I can't. And she's my mom. And she's your mom. <laughs> right. So uh, so that's the first thing. But but the second thing is, you know, you've got to, when you start it, you've got to start it from a culture of accountability and ownership. Hmm. Right. You can't, you know, it's hard to add it in later. Right. So one of the things that that we've we've always done is every two years we put our jobs up for review hmm. because we always want the best people in the job. And if it's not you, you step away. You step away. You step out. You step down. Wow. You move up. Um, and you know we all have moved into different roles in 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 the business over the years as the businesses have have grown and as they've changed and as they've needed different skill sets. We've needed to bring in people that have more expertise and more experience in things that we don't have experience in. So if you were in that role and now we have somebody that, um, that can do that role at the level that we need it for, then you need to step out of that role. And hopefully you've developed skills in other areas that you can move up or you can move sideways, you know, sideways or you can move down or you can move out. And we've done it all. And we're going to continue to do it all because that's how you build a sustainable business. Have you ever had to fire a family member? Hell yeah. Really? Yeah. And then did you see them at the holidays? Was it Of awkward? course. How was it? I mean, you know, different people react to things differently. Yeah. You know, but, you know, it's not doing it out of malice or out of some power trip or out of some, you know, it's doing it out of, hey, if you're, you know, I tell people, if you're, this is our livelihood. Yeah. If you're not contributing to it, you're hurting it. And so why should the entire family and all the people that, that are associated in the business that way suffer because one person isn't willing to or is incapable of or uh, doesn't see the need to um, grow? Wow. Right? So, so, but if you create that, that, that environment of, where now let me I'm not trying to say that it's perfect and that right. we're all these stellar uh <laughs> performers and, and all of that. But what I am saying is that there is a um an understanding that you're expected to grow and scale with And the also business. show up with excellence. And show up with excellence. Like yes. I might be your brother, but that does not mean that does not mean exactly. Got it. Exactly. That's really diff I think a lot of people do family businesses. And things fall apart because there's no, the fact that there's no line is a problem for a lot, but you guys hold each other accountable. But it also, it also takes leadership, right? It takes, it takes, it takes, um, it takes, um, uh, 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 selflessness, right? Because, because the, the person that, that usually has to make those decisions doesn't necessarily want to make those decisions, right? Right. It's not like, Hey, I, I want to go fire so-and-so. Um, or I want to move so and so to this other role, and they want to be in this role. It, it, but it it is that you um, you have the best interests of everybody in mind, as opposed to just your best interests or the one individual's best interest, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 the way to do that is to really allow everybody to have a voice. Right. And allow everybody to be able to express it. Or I shouldn't say create the opportunity for everybody to have a voice and to express themselves. Now, you know, we can that can be another one because we can talk about <laughs> the pitfalls of that as well. Because right. sometimes you don't get anything done because you spend three weeks debating something. Trying to get consensus. Been, exactly. And you're like, you know what? Are there ever times when you're yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to. Oh, I, yeah. I got this decision. Yeah. Never, I heard you, but I'm make the ultimate call. Yep. And I think that's what's been so beautiful about. um uh, my family and running this business and, and why I'm so proud of, 
proud of us. You know, my, my, my mother and my sister and, you know, you know, all of the, my, all of my family members in this business is that we take great pride in excelling, Mm. you know, just collectively. And that has, that has permeated the organization. So we take great pride in excelling. And when you do that, then you, you know, a lot of the, the distracting elements that, that take away from that become less and less visible or distracting. Gotcha. So I'm always like Rich. I see Rich at random conferences and always on the go. One point, me and Rich actually had a meeting in a stairwell. <laughs> because we've been trying to track each other down. And he was like, wait, 25 minutes right now. Let's go into the stairwell. And we had a meeting in the middle of Asus Fest. Yeah, and it was we productive. Did. We, did. we sure did. We and sure I'm always did. Like, we did. It we was sure a very did. productive meeting. And I'm always like, how is Rich taking care of himself with all of this crazy that's around? Mm. I ask all my uh, guess like, mm. what is your self care thing? What do you do to recharge? Yeah, you know, um, that's that's sort of the you know we're starting to learn and hear a lot about self care. Yeah, right. Um, and we're starting to really get get um, religion around self care. <laughs> religion right. is a good way to put yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's what we're starting. We're to devoted. Get. We're, getting, yeah. we're getting we're getting we're getting we're getting devoted to it. Um, I haven't caught that religion yet. Really? You know, um, I, I think, I think I, I have, there are things that I've always done, right. Okay. Um, that I continue to do, um, which is, I, you know, I try to eat well. Okay. Right. Vegetarian know, or no? Know, no, 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 not vegetarian. Okay. That, so I, I said, I try. Try. <laughs> right. <laughs> Look, I enjoy um, chicken and fish. So yeah, you know, um, so, so, so diet isn't, diet is very important. To me. Okay. Sleep is very important to me. Really? Yeah, sleep is very important to me. You know, um, eight I, hours a night. I try to get ten. Ten. Try to get ten I hours get, a night. I try. I try to because what I I shouldn't say ten hours of sleep, oh, okay. but I try to get ten hours of quiet time. A day. Right. A day. No, mm-hmm. at night. So I like I like to 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 get in bed early, read. Okay. You know, um, wind down. Um, and I like to wake up early and read and wind up. Right. Mm. So I don't like to just get up and go, but I also don't just like to get to the place you, where I'm so exhausted. What do you read? That what do you read? Like what, any genres or are you, you talking? Know, no, you know, my, uh, 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 what I'm reading right now, um, is a book, um, by, um, Ben Horowitz, who is one of the, the founders. I know Ben of, and Felicia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The hard things about hard things. Mm, let me put oh, the that hard down. thing about hard things. The hard thing about hard things. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's really about some of the things we just talked about. You know, the, the 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 decisions that you have to make, and 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 what makes them harder, and what makes them uh, more um, more acceptable, right? And what what makes them less painful, and and so so I'm I'm really enjoying that. Um, okay. So yeah, so that's what I'm reading. Right Do you read now. typically like business books, or are you reading novels sometimes also? I don't think I've read a novel in maybe 10 years, wow. um, but I probably read, um, I used to probably read a book a month maybe. Okay. Um, but um, now that's stretched out a little bit more. It takes me longer to get through them um, simply because there's a, a million other things going on. Um, but um, So 10 hours of quiet time. Yeah, I like, I like my quiet time. Okay. I like my quiet time. Okay. Yeah. You know? I like my alone time. Introvert or no? You know, you would think that I'm an extrovert. No, but I I'm wouldn't. really an introvert. I would I would I would have guessed introvert. Yeah. yeah. People guess I'm an extrovert. I'm yeah. an introvert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm, def- I'm definitely an introvert. So food, quiet. Yeah. Food and rest. That's it. Yeah. You give keep you, that give going. You time. Yeah. And the other the other thing that I do, and that's coming up now, um, is every year. I go to an executive ed program hmm. every year. Every really? Year. That's my vacation. Stop. <laughs> That's my vacation. Really? I go stimulate my mind. I go learn something different. I go learn something new about how to, you know, whether it's about strategy, whether it's about finance, whether it's about organization, um, whatever it may be. Um, because I find that that keeps me sharp. That keeps my mind sharp. That, that gives me other things to think about. It puts me in an environment with other people 
that are seeing things that I'm seeing, but thinking differently about it and getting an opportunity to, to, to learn from them. So one of those like one week, like strong courses. Some of them are one week. Some of them are like right now I'm in a three week one. I'm in a three year, three weeks, of, three weeks a year for three years. So I'm wow. getting ready to to finish my last set of three weeks now. So you're you're uh, you're an, you're a constant student. Yeah, because that's 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 we all are constant students. It's just what we're choosing to study. Mm. You know, every every one of us is a constant student. You know, it's just are we choosing to study something that's challenging us, or are we just choosing to learn more about the things that we already master? Whew. Well, the interesting thing about the self care question is, you know, people think about the very um, What's the, the very trendy aspect of it? Mm-hmm. But a lot of people who are building businesses think there's no room for sleep, think there's no room for like, I'll pick up whatever. So you're you've basically built in the core, the basic foundation yeah. of what self-care is, yeah. Yeah. which is the rest and what you're taking in. Exactly. And the reality of it is that the wow. problem's going to be there tomorrow morning when you wake up. Okay, you can't solve it at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, just go to sleep. You know, go get your rest so that you're sharp. You're sharp and you're and you're able to solve it. And it probably ain't nothing but an opportunity to find a solution anyway. So come on, just go 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 get your rest. Come back at it fresh. And sometimes that's what it takes. It's, it's just a nap. Yeah, get some good sleep. Yeah. Yo, Rich, yeah. this has been yeah. dope. I might have to make this like a two-parter. I don't know. I just feel like this just I feel like people need to like absorb some of it and come back and then listen to the rest of it. This has been so illuminating. And I am so excited to see the the work that you continue to do with the new voices fund with Essence. Thank you. And then we gotta we gotta catch up on that offline because I got some serious updates for you. Yo, see, see, yeah. this is how me and Rich get things done. Literally on the go. We know how we operate. <laughs> <laughs> but I honestly I am such a fan of what you're building, what you you are affirming because as a black man who's standing in this gap and you're like, you know what, black women, y'all do your thing. I'm just be here and give you some cash. That right there is so important. And you took the time to come on the podcast. So much appreciated, sir. Well, thank you. Ah. This is, this has been fun. Always, always great to talk to you. Yo, and, you, and, you are brilliant. So I'm learn. looking forward to more y'all follow Rich is not honestly, don't even follow Rich on social. He don't even be on social media. <laughs> like, cause he's too busy running around the world. <laughs> so, so I was follow essence. Okay. Keep supporting essence. Exactly. Keep supporting Shea Moisture. Exactly. And let's keep supporting black businesses. Let's give each other grace to grow, make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And honestly, let's just really start putting some skills behind these businesses that we want to grow. So more to come. So invest the time. Invest the time. All right. Rich. Much. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Professional Troublemaker podcast. If you loved what you heard, make sure you subscribe to Professional Troublemaker in your podcast platform of choice and share it with people. Let them know this is dope. Also, order my namesake book, Professional Troublemaker, the Fear Fighter Manual, anywhere that you buy books. I especially love when you buy it from independent bookstores. So go to professionaltroublemakerbook.com for more because this book is game changing. And I'd say that even if I wasn't the one who wrote it. Please make sure you rate this show and leave a comment with a five-star review, whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you choose to listen. Feel free to also share some insights and whatever connected with you on social media and be sure to tag us. We are at Professional Troublemaker on Instagram. And me, I'm at Lovey everywhere. Until next time, have the courage to speak your truth and show up as yourself. Create good trouble.